Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language and machine learning. So in this video I will attempt to predict the future price of Ether, also known as Ethereum, by using of course machine learning and Python. Now before we begin, if you like the videos on this channel, then be sure to click that subscribe and like button and to be notified about new videos from this channel, hit that bell notification. And the material in this video is purely educational and should not be taken as professional investment advice as I am no financial advisor. So please do your own research before making any investment. Now I'm currently on Google's website. It's called colab.research.google.com and I'm on it because it makes it really easy to start programming in Python. So that means that all you have to do is go to this website and then log in using your Google account and get started writing your Python code. So to get started writing this code, go ahead and click on file then click on new notebook and a new tab open up for you and then eventually a new cell. And in this cell, I'm gonna put in some comments. I'm gonna put in a description about the program so I'm going to type this program attempts to predict the future price of ETH. And next I'm going to create a new cell by clicking this code button in the top left. And now I'm going to import the libraries that I'm going to use throughout the program. So I'm going to import pandas as PD. I'm going to import numpy as MP. And then from sklearn.svm, I'm going to import SPR. And I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then I'm going to give the plot a style. So I'm going to type plt.style.use. And I'm going to use 538 style. So let's go ahead and run this cell. OK. And of course, this will let me know if I made any mistakes. All right. So it looks like I'm good to go. Let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now let's load the the ETH data so from google.colab I'm going to import files and then I'm going to type files.upload to upload the file so let's go ahead and run this cell and click on choose files and I'm going to choose that ETH underscore price dot CSV file to upload okay so it's already uploaded let's go ahead and read in the data so there we go. All right. So let's create a variable called df and set it equal to pd dot read underscore csv. And I'm going to read in that eth underscore price dot csv file. And then I'm going to show the data. So I'm going to type df here. So let's go ahead and run this. OK, and now we can see the data. We have 137 rows of data and seven columns. And it's from the date 1-1-2021 to 517 2021 okay and we have our columns date open price high price low price close price adjusted close price and volume and I'm going to change these indices to be the date so let's go ahead and do that now we're going to set the date as the index all right so set df equal to df dot set underscore index and then we're going to input pd dot date time index and then from there we're going to input our date. So that's our date column dot values. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this again. And now I can see that the indices have changed to be the date. Okay, next let's go ahead and create a new cell. And now in this cell, I'm going to create a variable for predicting end days into the future. So I'm going to create a variable called future underscore days and set it equal to five. So let's go ahead and run that. Let's create a new cell. And now I'm going to I'm going to create a new column. And this column will will contain our our target. All right? So it's going to contain the future price. So let's go ahead and call this oh, Let's go ahead and call this column we'll put the future price as a string so uh, future days as a string and we're going to append that to day underscore price underscore forecast okay so again we've casted the future days as a string so this will say something like five day price forecast and actually I'm gonna put a underscore here so now it'll say five underscore day underscore price underscore forecast okay so this will be our new column so we're going to set it equal to the let's go with the close price 
going to do the close price, shift it up, future days. Okay. All right. So then I want to go ahead and and let's see. I want to show the current price and the future price. So we're going to show the data and I'm just going to put DF and then I'm going to put in the close price and then the future price will be this here. So I'm just going to highlight this and copy it using control C then come here and paste it using control V and let's run this. Okay, so there we go. So based off of the close price here, five days from now, the price will be this here. All right. And then same for this row. Currently, that price is about 774.53 ish USD. And five days from now, it will be about 1,225.6. I'm going to round that up to eight. So 1,225.68 USD. All right. So on and so forth. OK, so now we're done with that. Let's create a new cell. And now it's time to set up our data for some machine learning. So let's go ahead and create the independent data set X. And let's set that equal to MP.array. And we're going to put in the close price. OK, and then I'm going to remove the last the last end rows of data the last future days so it's going to be the, the last five days of data right because we set future days I'm looking up here future days equal to five so we're going to remove the last five rows of data so let's go ahead and do that now by setting x equal to x where we want everything everything up to the length of the data set so that's df shape at position 0 minus future days all right and then I'm going to just show X or print X so let's go ahead and run this and there we go so now we have our X data set all right let's create a new cell and now in this cell I'm going to create my Y data set let me just bring this up a little bit so I'm going to set y equal to mp.array and this will contain our target column so I'm just going to come back up here right here and I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm going to copy use control C then I'm going to come down and and then I'm going to put df and I'm going to paste what I just copied here all right, and then I want all of the the values for y from the very first row all the way up to the the last uh, up to the last rows minus five or minus the future days. So I'm gonna put minus future underscore days. Okay, and that should do it. And then I'm going to print Y as well. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And there we go. So now we have our Y data set. All right, our, our dependent data set. Okay, and then of course we created our X data set, our independent data set. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new cell now that we've created these two data sets, X and Y, and let's split the data. All right, so from sklearn.model selection, I'm going to import train underscore test underscore split, and I'm gonna create my variables X train. I'm gonna create the variable X underscore test y train and y test okay so i have my four variables here x underscore train x underscore test 
y underscore train and y underscore test and I'm going to set them equal to train underscore test underscore split and I'm going to put in my x and my y data set and then I'm going to give it a test size equal to 0 0.2 so 20 percent of this data will be for testing and then 80 percent will be for training okay so let's go ahead and run this and let's create a new cell all right so now in this cell I'm going to use SVR for the model so from sklearn.svm or sklearn.support vector machines I'm going to import support vector regressor SVR all right so let's go ahead and create this model so I'm going to create a variable called SVR underscore RBF and I'm going to set this equal to SVR I'm going to give it a kernel equal to RBF a C value equal to 1E3 and then a gamma equal to 0 0.00001 okay and then I'm going to train the model so I'm just going to type SVR underscore RBF dot fit and we're going to put in the training data sets so that's X underscore train and Y underscore train and let's run this let's see if we get any errors okay so no errors that looks pretty good we're going to create a new cell now and let's see how well the model did on the test data so we're going to see what the score is that it's going to return and keep in mind that the best possible score is 1.0 so let's just see what the model comes back with I'm going to create a variable called SVR underscore RBF underscore confidence and I'm going to set this equal to SVR underscore RBF dot score and then we're going to put in the test data sets so that's X test and Y underscore test so we have X underscore test and y underscore test here okay and let's print the SVR underscore RBF accuracy and then put a colon a comma here and then we're going to print that SVR RBF confidence so I'm just going to highlight this copy using control C then come here and paste it using control V and let's run this okay and I misspelled accuracy let's put a Y here all right so that's not bad this model is about 87.8 percent accurate on the test data so that's pretty cool and let's go ahead and create a new cell and now let's let's take a look at those predicted values right so what makes it so good we want to see those actual values and we want to compare them I'm sorry we want to see the predicted values and we want to compare them to the actual values so let's go ahead and print the predicted values so I'm going to create a variable called SVM underscore prediction and let's set it equal to SVR underscore RBF dot predict and we're going to put in the test data so that's X test because I want to see the the data that gave us this this score here of about 87.8 percent all right so let's go ahead and print svm underscore prediction all right so there we go so these are the values let's go ahead and take a look at the actual values all right so we're going to print the actual y value so that's y underscore test let's go ahead and run this and we can do some comparison one by one so the, the model predicted that the five day price for ETH for uh, the close price was 1301.9897744 USD when the actual value was 1218.4530293. All right, and we can continually see that these values are pretty close um, to each other. All right, so yeah, we look here. That value is kind of close to that one, a little off actually. Uh, well, quite a bit off. 
and then this value here is pretty close to this one so it's really hard to kind of see this just by looking at the data so let's go ahead and visualize this uh, with a plot so I'm going to create a plot to see both the predicted and the actual values so let's go ahead and do that now so just type plt dot figure and then give the figure a figure size so I'm going to set fig size equal to 12 comma 4 and then I'm going to type plt dot plot and we're going to put in the SVM predictions and let's give this a label so I'm just going to make the label prediction and uh, I guess I give it a line width I set the line width equal to 2 and I'll give it an alpha equal to 0.7 and then I'm just going to highlight this and I'm going to copy using control C and just change a few values and then paste it I'll use control V um, and then use and then change a few values I'm sorry so now we're going to change again a few values so instead of SVM here I'm going to put Y underscore test and then the label will be the actual values and we can keep the other two parameters the same and then let's give this a title so plt dot title and I'm going to put prediction versus actual and then let's give the y access a label so plt dot y label will be price in USD let's give the x access a label so plt dot x label will be time some unit of time and let's get that legend so plt dot legend or show the legend and then we want to to rotate the x ticks so I'm going to type plt dot x ticks and I'm going to set rotation equal to 45 and then I want to show this I'm going to type plt dot show and let's run this alright so it looks like I misspelled rotation here alright so let's run this again so there we go so now we can see it more visually how accurate the model was on making the future five-day price prediction for ether for ETH and it looks really really good so it, it seems to be pretty close right now now of course this is just a really really small data set and then of course the the values that this model attempted to predict was an even smaller data set so this model you know needs a lot more testing like any like anything right you need to continually test before you put it out to production so again you know take this with a grain of salt and that's basically the end of the video and we are done predicting the future price of ETH using Python and machine learning. I will put the code and data set on my Patreon page and a link to that in the description below. Also, if you would like to start investing in crypto, I will leave a link to BlockFi in the description as well, where you can get $10 worth of Bitcoin when you sign up and deposit $100 or more using that link. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next video.